In today's lecture, we are going to have another exercise of one-way ANOVA. And in this case, we are taking the example from fish. The otolith diameter of fish grown at different temperatures was measured. The nominal variable in this case are ponds with different temperature values. And these are samples or our treatments. And there are three categories of these treatments of different temperatures. The sample number one is from the treatment, which is 16 to 18 degrees Celsius. Sample number two is the treatment, which is 19 to 21 degrees Celsius. And some, sample number three constitutes the fish, which are grown at the temperature treatment of 22 to 24 degrees Celsius, right? So we have three categories of the nominal, uh, nominal variable over here. And the measurement variable is the autolith diameter. Now the question is, is there a difference in the mean autolith diameter of fish grown at different temperatures? The null hypothesis is the mean autolith diameter of fish grown at different temperatures is same. The alternate hypothesis is there is at least one significant difference in the mean autolith diameter of fish grown at different temperatures. You can also write this alternate hypothesis as that the mean autolith diameter of fish grown at different temperatures is different, right? But I have written this statement here to be more elaborate and to be more specific about the basic assumption of ANOVA, right? And these are the observations that we have, uh, and not the observations, but this is the descriptive statistics, right? So remember, what is the difference between observations and descriptive statistics? Observations is your raw data, your observations, the score of your observations. And this is the descriptive statistics that you work out from those observations, right? And this table of descriptive statistics is going to be used for the calculation of ANOVA during the ANOVA computation. So what, you have, what do we have in this descriptive uh, table is the total number of observations in each of the samples and then the grand total of the number of observations. So these are 50 in sample number 1, 45 in sample number 2, and 44 in sample number 3. So the total number of observations is 139. Then we have the mean autolith diameter in case of sample number 1. This is 9.017 millimeters. In sample number 2, this is 6.025 millimeters. And in sample number 3, this is 4.847 millimeters. The variance in sample number 1 is 13.27 millimeters. Variance in sample number 2 is 15.41 millimeters. And variance in sample number 3 is 23.08 millimeters. The summation x, which is the sum of all individual observations. For sample number 1, this is 450.84. For sample number 2, this is 271.13. For sample number 3, this is 213.26. And the total is 935.23. Then we have the square of summation x. So this is the square of 450.84 for sample number 1. And the answer is 203,255.8. And then we have the square of sample number 2, which is the square of 271.13. And we have the square value for sample number 3, which is the square of 213.26. And the answer is 45,480.24, uh, right? So this is the situation that we have. And then in the last row, we have summation x square which is the square of individual observations and then we take their sum for sample number one this is 4715.2 for sample number two this is 2311.75 and for sample number three this is uh, 2026.02 and the total is 9052.97 right so this is the situation that we have here in the descriptive statistics now, step one is to make a table of descriptive statistics that we have already done. The step number two is test for homogeneity of variance. Remember, before computation of ANOVA, we have to check that whether population variances are same or no. And we do it by a simple Fmax test. And the Fmax test is largest variance divided by smallest variance. 
The largest variance in this example is 23.08 and the smallest variance is 13.27 and the ratio is 1.74. So let's see that whether this ratio is significant or no and for that purpose we need the A value which is the number of samples or treatments which in this case is 3 and the degree of freedom of every sample or the smallest sample. So in this case we have different sample sizes so the degree of freedom that we are going to choose for the Fmax test is the degree of freedom of the smallest sample and the smallest sample is 44 right the number of observations in the smallest sample is 44 so our degree of freedom is going to be 43 so here we are with the values so the table value of 1.94 at a of 3 and degree of freedom 43. So variances are homogeneous, we can proceed with ANOVA. Now in the step number 3 we have to calculate the correction term, right? And remember the formula for correction term? This is the summation xt whole square divided by nt. So 935.23 square divided by 139. So we have here 6 1,292.4831. Now step number four is we have to calculate total uh, sum of squares and the formula for that one is summation x square minus correction term. So this is 9052.97 minus 6292.4831 and the answer is 2760.4869. So this is our total uh, sum of squares. Then we have to calculate the sum of squares between samples. And we have three samples. So we have the um, values for each of the samples. And then we are going to subtract them from the correction term. right? So the values for the first sample are 203255.8 divided by 50. And the values for the sample number 2 is 73,512.64 divided by 45. And the values for sample number 3 is 45,480.24 divided by 44. Then we take the sum of these values and subtract them from the correction term. And here we are with the sum of squares between, which is 439.89, right? Now our step number six, which is the calculation of sum of squares within. So in that case, we have to calculate the individual sum of square values. So sum of squares for sample number one is the summation x square minus summation x whole square divided by n1. So in this case, we have the values 4715.2 minus we have the product of 2032558.8, which is 203,255.8 divided by the number of observations in sample number one, which is 50. And the answer that we get is 650.084. So this is the sum of squares for sample number one. Then we have sum of squares for sample number two. And for that purpose, we have summation x square, which is 2311.75. And then the summation x2 whole square is 73,512.64. And this is divided by the number of observations in sample number 5, which is 45. And our answer is 678.136, which is the sum of squares for sample number 2. Then we have the sample number 3 and the summation x square for sample number 3 is 2026.02 .02, and the uh, summation x3 whole square is 45480.24 and this is to be divided by the number of observations in sample number 3 which is 44. So we get the answer which is 992.378 which is the sum of squares for sample number 3. Now remember the next step that we have. The next step is to take the sum of these individual sum of squares and that will be our within sum of uh, within sample sum of squares 
So 650.084 plus 678.136 plus 992.378 and the answer is 2320.598. So this is the value of our sum of squares within. Now we can cross check these values and this is because the total uh, variability is equal to between variability and within samples variability and so is the case with the sum of squares that the total sum of squares is equal to the sum of sum of squares between and sum of squares within. So if we want to work out uh, any of these values we need to have the information about two other values. So in this case we want to cross check the value of sum of squares within so for that purpose it is total sum of squares minus between sum of squares. So the total sum of squares that we calculated is 2760.4869 and the between sum of squares that we calculated was 439.89. So their difference is 2320.598 and this confirms that our calculation of the individual uh, sum of squares and then taking their sum for the sum of squares within is correct. Right? Now the next step is to determine the number of degrees of freedom for each sum of squares. So degree of freedom for the total sum of squares is the total number of observations minus 1. So what is our total number of observations? This is 50 plus 45 plus 44 which is 139. So 139 minus 1 is 138. So this is the degree of freedom for the total sum of squares. And then degree of freedom for the between sum of squares and this is a minus 1. So remember a, a is the number of samples or the number of treatments which in this case we have 3. So 3 minus 1 is 2. So 2 is the degree of freedom for between sum of squares. Then we have degree of freedom for within sum of squares and for that purpose we have to take the total number of observations minus the total number of samples. So the total number of observations are 139 and the um, number of samples or the number of treatments that we have these are 3 so 139 minus 3 is 136 so we can do this uh, calculation for the degree of freedom for sum of squares within in another way too and what is the other way that we calculate the individual degrees of freedom for each sample and then we take their sum so this is going to be the same value right now we have calculated their degrees of freedom so what should be the next step? So remember in the ANOVA results table, uh, what do we have? We have different columns. The first column is for the sum of squares. The second column is for the degrees of freedom. So we are done with these two calculations. What is the next column about? The next column is for the calculation of the mean sum of squares or the variances. And we calculate two variances, the variances between samples, between treatments, and the variances within samples, right? So we are going to calculate variances now. So here we are for the calculation of variances. So the first variance that we are going to calculate is the variance between samples. So for that purpose, we are going to divide the sum of squares between by the degrees of freedom between. And the answer is 439.89 divided by 2, 219.945. So this is our variance for between samples variability. Then we have to calculate the next variance which is the variance within and for that purpose we are going to divide the sum of squares within by the degrees of freedom within which in this case is 2320.5969 divided by 136 and the variance within is 17.0632 right so here uh, you can see that between variance is greater than within variance now what is the next step in the ANOVA computation? The next step is to calculate the ratio of between and within variances, right? Which is the value of our F in ANOVA. So next step is to compute the value of F for ANOVA. And F in this case is obtained by dividing the between samples variance by within samples variance, right? So between samples variance divided by within samples variance and which in this case is 
uh, 219.945, which is the between samples variance, which is greater, and it is divided by 17.0632, which is the within samples variance, and the answer is 12.89. Now, the thing is that uh, if if our within samples variance is greater, are we going to take within samples variance as numerator? No, this is not the case because this F test is one tailed. So within sum of scares always has to be the denominator. It cannot be taken as numerator. Whether it is small or it is greater than between samples variance, it has to be taken as the denominator, right? So here we are with the F value, which is 12.89. So what is the assumption of ANOVA? The assumption of ANOVA or the null hypothesis of ANOVA is the population variances and population means are similar. And we already checked that population variances are similar through the FMAX test. So now we are checking that whether the means are different or no and for that purpose we have to compare the between samples variance by and the within samples variance. So in this case um, according to our null hypothesis if the population means are similar, then the ratio of between samples variance to within samples variance should be equal to 1. So they should be same, right? But in this case, what do we see here is that the ratio is greater than 1. So this ratio is 12.89. Now, how we can confirm that this ratio is significantly greater than 1 or no? For that purpose, we have to compare the calculated F value with the tabled F value, right? So tabled values are 3.06 at probability of 0 0.05 and 4.76 at probability of 0 0.01 and 0 0.001 at, uh, sorry, 7.27 at probability of 0 0.001. And remember, what is our calculated value? Our calculated value is 12.89, which is greater than the calculated table value at uh, probability 0 0.05, which is 3.06. So we reject our null hypothesis. Then we see that whether our result is significant at the next level of significance or no. So we see that it is significant. It is highly significant because the calculated value is greater than the table value of 4.76. Then we jump on to the next level which is the probability of 0 0.001 and we see that our uh, calculated value is greater than the table value which is 7.27 at probability of 0 0.001 so we can say that our result is very highly significant so now we are going to state the result and the result is the difference in the mean autolith diameter of fish grown at different temperatures is very highly significant right so the f value is 12.89 and probability is less than 0 0.001 now remember whenever we state the results of ANOVA we have to state the f value and the f value is stated along with information about the degree of freedom against which we have taken that f value so the degree of freedom in this case is 2 for between and 136 for within so these degrees of freedom they are mentioned along with the value of f when, whenever we are reporting the results of ANOVA. So this is another exercise that we have done for the calculation of ANOVA and this is the calculation of the simplest form of ANOVA which is the one-way ANOVA in which we have one nominal variable and one measurement variable. And the nominal variable in this case was different temperature treatments. So we had three uh, different temperature treatments and the measurement variable was the autolith diameter of fish which was our response variable and we saw the effect of uh, different temperatures on the autolith diameter and here is the result that we can see that there is a significant effect very highly significant effect of temperature in which fish are grown on their autolith diameter.